Next is my dear friend Keibo Iwa from Tokyo. We've been working together, but we met 19 Oh, sorry, Yokohama is outside Tokyo. And as you may have read, he's a professor of cultural anthropology. We've been collaborating. We met actually in Byron Bay for the first time. You reminded me 19 years ago. And especially for the last decade, we've been collaborating, building up a, a localization movement in Japan. And thanks to Cable's work and his renown in Japan and his friendship with David Suzuki and the book you did together, we've been able to get a bit into the media and really help to grow what's a very exciting movement now. Um, and what I also love about Cabo is that he's been able to, and be willing to, for I myself hate traveling, so I also do a fair amount, but Cabo has traveled a lot and been able to bring his students to Ladakh, to Bhutan, to Thailand, to to India, to the US, to Italy. He brought the former Minister of Agriculture from Japan to our Economics of Happiness Conference in Italy this summer. So I'm so grateful to you, Cable, for all your hard work. Thank you, thanks for coming here today. Wow, powerful speeches. Let's slow down a bit. <laughs> Is, is our society, your society, this world, a happy place? Is this a planet, a happy planet? We used to believe naively that the economic growth will bring us to happiness, and those who are living in rich north are better off and happier than those who live in the less developed and impoverished south. This basic assumption or a belief um, however, has been proven wrong in many of recent researches. In Japan, for instance, besides the universal environmental uh, crisis and, and uh, climate change related disasters, and the uh, ever greater uh, gap between the rich and the poor and between the urban and the, uh, and the rural, 40 million people that is more than one third of the population, live alone today. More and more people are dying alone. Sense of isolation and the helplessness is epidemic. The pop population uh, of the teen is dropping, but the suicide is increasing. And you, have you heard of the word uh, hikikomori? It's secluding oneself. The number is increasing rapidly and the domestic violence is skyrocketing. And we are now witnessing lots of hate crimes against the disabled, the weak, and the elderly. Today I want you to know one Japanese uh, word, shiawase. Let's pronounce it, shiawase. Uh, this means happiness or well-being. But this word originally signifies uh, togetherness, relatedness, and cooperation, putting work together. And this expresses an old cultural worldview where everything is related. Contrast this with a modern individualistic, competitive, and a typically American notion of the pursuit of happiness. Shiawase is a localized notion that is me uh, meaningful in a specific place and, and time. Whereas uh, pursuit of happiness is what I call delocalized, abstract, and is independent of a specific space and time, globalized. It was a century ago that the Mahatma Gandhi criticized the ideology of economic uh, growth and uh, technological advance. To him, the problem was not the poverty, but the wealth itself. Not underdevelopment, but overdevelopment. While we have been passionately fighting over the poverty and, uh, and the development issues, we have rarely questioned the virtues of progress and wealth. It is 
this economic mindset that we must unlearn, then we can start walking the path towards the economics of well-being instead of the economics of wealth, shifting from the economics of greed, possession, uh, and domination to the uh, economics of uh, need and, and the sharing, and economics of shiawase. In the year 2001, I wrote a book entitled The Slow is Beautiful. As you can guess, I was inspired by uh, E.F. Schumacher's famous uh, Small is Beautiful, the title which came from this phrase, man is small, therefore small is beautiful. What did he mean by humans being small? That is to say, humans is localized, living in a socially, culturally, and uh, naturally defined and bound space and time. Human life can only be sustainable within biological and cultural communities. What Schumacher said about the size and the space appropriate for humans can also be said about time, appropriate pace and rhythm for humans. That's what I mean by slow is beautiful. Slowness is essential to each and every culture. Culture is a web of interdependent relationships, ecological, social, and, uh, and spiritual. In each relationship, there is a befitting rhythm and tempo and amount of time spent. The soil, the air, animals, plants, the seasons that come and go, and, uh, and ocean ties, and so on. On this great natural tapestry, human thoughts and actions embroider new meanings through mythology, festivals, rituals, dances, and songs. Every community is a kind of commons within a complex web, web of relationship of humans with the other humans, with nature, and the gods, deities, and spirits. It is an economic system of gift and sharing. There, slowness is an essential property of any meaningful and worthy relationship. Everyone knows that it takes time to make a friend, nurture, and sustain love. If you want it to be sustainable, go slow. <laughs> Efficiency and the love don't stand together. Nobody wants to be loved efficiently. <laughs> but that's exactly what we are saying to our children, our grandchildren. Love, by definition, is slow. What is happiness again? Here's one image. Imagine you are just born, your baby. And as you open your eyes, the first, time, first, uh, first thing you see is 10 faces all looking down at you. The smiling faces are all saying to you, welcome, we are here for you. Nothing to worry about. We are always by your side taking care of you. This beautiful image comes from our friend Helena's the book, The Ancient Futures, where she was uh, describing about the Ladakhi, traditional Ladakhi society. Ancient futures, what a powerful notion. Think about it. What is this, ancient futures? It challenges the modern Newtonian linear time, concept of linear time, and reminds us that Future is not necessarily ahead of us. Future can be in the ancient times. Happiness or shiawase can be as ancient as community, sharing, and smiles on human faces. The most profound truth could be found not in some remote place or uh, far ahead in, in, in future but just around yourself. I quote the 18th century Japanese philosopher, 
Bayam, meaning plum garden. What is really, he said this, what is really amazing is not the flowers on a dead tree, but flowers on a living tree. Life is a miracle, and there is always a hope. Finally, a story in honor of my friend who is sitting here, who sat with me in Ecuador and heard together uh, this story from uh, our uh, indigenous Quechua friends. The forest was on fire. All the animals and the birds rushed to escape, except one tiny hummingbird called Kreekindi, golden bird. That keeps carrying a drop of water in her beak to the burning forest. The animals and the birds looked at it and said, laughing, what do you think you are doing? Kreekindi replied, I'm just doing what I can. There's something that drives one to act as if there was a hope, even in a desperate situation. So, there's a hope. Thank you.